guys, uh, my name is Julia and today I wanted to share with you my stats to hopefully help some of you decide whether or not that you should apply to medical school this upcoming cycle because I know um, I made my decision around this time of year last year. And so if you are interested then just keep watching. <laughs> So just a little bit of background about me, I graduated in May 2020 with a degree in Behavioral Biology and a minor in Visual Arts and I'm currently working as a research assistant for my gap year, um, mostly doing clinical work. And so I wanted to come here and talk to you about um, my stats and stuff just because I did not have the best MCAT and I also didn't have the best GPA, um, but I got a medical school, so yay! <laughs> like. I'm in a position where I never thought I'd be and I wouldn't be here unless the people who love me um, encourage me and push me to apply and so hopefully I can help some of you guys out today. I have some of my stats pulled up here and to just jump right into it, um, I've actually never shared any of my numbers with anyone because I'm not the most proud of them, I'm still not that proud of them, but I'm just putting myself out there to hopefully help some of you out. So. Um, Anyways, so my GPA did not have an upward trend, okay? So my cumulative GPA was a 3.5, my science GPA was a 3.56, and my non-science GPA was a 3.55, and this is the GPA calculated by AMCAS um, or for MD schools. I think my DO school um, GPA was slightly higher. I was a little confused on why it was different between the two platforms, but regardless, not the best GPA. I wanted to come in here and just say that it was just lower than the reported accepted GPA for most of the schools that I had applied to. It, definitely not the worst GPA. I know there's some um, pre-meds pre out there who apply with a high 2, like a 2.7, 2.8, or a low 3, like a 3, 3, 1, 3, 2, etc. And so my GPA isn't the worst, but it definitely isn't the best, like, I was the type of person who never told anyone about my GPA because I knew a lot of pre-meds who were crying over a 3.7, a 3.8, and I was just like, you, you would be bawling if you had my GPA. So, um, and I really just want to talk about it because I did not have an upward trend to my GPA. Like, my GPA was like, down here and then it was down here again because I actually failed a class that I had to retake later. Um, I never figured out if that class was considered a science or non-science class but regardless I failed one of my major classes um, and then my GPA went up and then my GPA went down again and then senior year went up and then just when I wanted to bring it even more up COVID happened so all my classes became pass-fail. So I didn't have the upward trend that I saw a lot of people on YouTube and Reddit, etc. talk about when talking about people who apply to medical schools with a lower GPA. So I, I was really worried because I didn't have that trend and I just didn't see anyone with my kind of stats apply. So yeah, <laughs> I was pretty much a average um, B to B plus student. Uh, not the worst. All my pre-med classes, I think I averaged around a B. Chemistry and physics were not my friends. I love biology, um, but yeah. And so now moving on to my MCAT, I had a low MCAT. Like, the first time I took my MCAT, so I took my MCAT twice. Three times. Long story. But my application for the schools that I got into, they only saw the first two times. So the first time I took it, I was not prepared to take it, and I definitely should not have taken it, but I didn't think it would be that bad. Um, I definitely scored lower than my practice exams, um, partly because I'm not a good test taker, I get really bad test anxiety, I get really nervous for tests, and I just usually underperform during the actual test when compared to a more, less stressful environment. And so the first time I took my MCAT, I got a 499, yeah. I don't think I've ever said those words out loud, and I've definitely never told anyone that before, so if any of my friends or family is watching, like, please don't judge me. Um, but I got a 499, which is a 43 percentile, and my breakdown was a 123, a 124, a 127, and a 125. So yeah, don't know 
yeah it wasn't great i shouldn't have done it i spent the whole summer studying like a lot of my peers did um some of them decided to take it and were, they did fabulous some of them decided not to take it and postpone it um i decided to take it because i was like why not let's see i shouldn't have played with my MCAT like that but i took it um i even took a MCAT prep course for it a three-month MCAT prep course for it but i don't think that actually helped me so if you guys want to know more about my experience with a Kaplan MCAT prep course, then please let me know. Um, but the second time I took my MCAT was in March of 2020. It was actually the last MCAT that they offered before everything shut down because of COVID. So for the March one, I actually kind of want to postpone it, but it was the MCAT right before my spring break. And I was like, I really needed my spring break just to relax. I've been studying for an MCAT for so long by that point. Um, but COVID happened, et cetera, et cetera, and I was like, I had to go through with it. So I went through with it, and I got a 506, which still isn't great. So please don't judge me for those of you out there. It is a seven point increase. I was pretty proud of myself because I was a full-time student through all of this. Um, I had an internship. I had leadership experiences. I just basically had other responsibilities that um, I had to take care of that semester as well. And so I, I think I'm pretty proud of myself because it is a some point increase like I said but it still isn't the best MCAT score like my goal was like a 512 or yeah 512 um so for those of you who don't know a 506 is a 67 percentile my breakdown was 126 125 126 and 129 so those are my stats and I looking back like I still don't know how I did it like I'm still in shock that I got into medical school and I'm currently I've been accepted to five schools I've been accepted to one MD program um, and four DO programs um, and I got another interview that I decided not to go to because I'm pretty set on one of my schools and I just really love the program there so I'll, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be attending there um, in t this upcoming fall um, but those are Actually, the only five schools or six schools that offered me interview invites as well, and so I got all, I got accepted into all of my interviews. So yay! Um, don't know how I did that either, <laughs> but I'm just I don't know what happened. I think I really think that schools looked past my stats into my application and decided that I would be a good fit for that school. Um, so. I think what really saved me was one, I did come from um, a top 10 institution and so maybe, I know I've heard some stories about them giving extra points or whatever to people who come from certain schools, so maybe that happened um, to help cover my lower GPA. Um, but ultimately I think what happened was I had a strong um, application like in terms of maybe my experiences or what they think I could bring to the school. I did do research, I worked, I volunteered in multiple places, I stood in leadership, um, and I actually did pursue something I'm really interested in, which is art, um, with my art minor and all my and some of my extracurriculars, and I was really trying to find my niche in college with art and medicine, etc., so maybe they thought I was a little bit interesting, maybe that's what helped me get to medical school, but, you know, ultimately you never really know, but that is just my hunch. Regardless, I'm still amazed that I am here and that I'm going to be starting medical school in the fall, which is just insane to me because, you know, we work our whole lives to get to this moment and to apply, and I know, I think it's only like 40% of people actually get into a school um, on their first application cycle, and so I'm just extremely thankful and extremely grateful that I did, and I didn't have to do a post bag program um, because that wasn't that's ultimately what I think I would have done if I didn't get in anywhere this cycle. And I'm just really still in shock. So overall the tips and advice I want to leave all of you with today is that your application is way more than your stats. Like I truly do believe that. And a school will accept you if they think that you're a good fit for the school. As shown through your personal statement or your activity list or your recommendation letters. Um, etc. And so even if you have low stats but you feel like you're ready for medical school, um, and then go for it. Um, just try because I didn't have the confidence to try 
and I'm glad that my loved ones pushed me. And I also just want to say that it's possible to get in medical school even if your stats are lower than the school's reported um, average MCAT or average GPA. Um, for one of my interviews, the interviewer actually told me that my stats were lower than what they typically accept, which kind of threw me off guard, but it is true and it is a fact that I had thought that I wouldn't have to talk about during one of my interviews and I did, so as long as you own up to it and as long as you know where your mistakes are and how you can improve yourself as an applicant and to just be honest in your interviews and to yourself, then I think will, everything will be okay, but I have a belief that everything in the end will be okay, so yeah. And so if you guys want to know more... If you guys want more videos on um, DO versus MD, a thorough review of my application um, for both AMCAS and ACOMIS, or any, any other thing that you guys might be interested in, um, please let me know because I would love to make more videos and to help you guys out. So, thanks for watching.